MusicCineAZ.com, a legacy project of Patricia Myers, with music news, interviews, and performances. Arizona is home to and features some of the best musicians in the country. Go to MusicCineAZ.com for the latest music news and musician interviews, the most complete event calendar in Arizona, Young Sounds of Arizona news, and performances. MusicCineAZ.com. What a cool way to round out crossing borders for you on a Friday evening. If you are young enough, you may have thought that that tune was actually a mashup of a lot of different people's songs, but it's actually the other way around. That song's been sampled so much over the years that it does kind of feel like it's the other way around. But that was originally performed in 1987 by a group called Afro Rican, of course, called Give It All You Got. Right before that one, I played James Brown. I got the feeling. I played Nick Moss Band featuring Dennis Grunling. That was called The High Cost of Low Living. I started this set with the Moody Blues, Never Comes the Day. Hey, thanks for joining me for four hours of Crossing Borders for you on a Friday evening. We're going to send Ricardo all of our well wishes, hoping he is on the mend as soon as possible. In the meantime, you know it's Friday evening, so you can catch AZ Music 586 at 7 o'clock, coming up right after a really short break. Right after that, every weekday at 8 o'clock is Global Village. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you next week. You're listening to the Arizona Community Radio Network on KJZA 89.5 Drake, KJZP 90.1 Prescott, and KJZK 90.7 Kingman. Radio 586 AZ Roots. Music mix from the desert southwest. Making Arizona musicians and music tastes of our region more accessible to world media. Made possible by a grant from YoungSounds.org. Young Sounds of Arizona on Facebook. This radio series is part of a community outreach for Arizona musicians, as well as members of Local 586. And now your host for this radio episode, DJ Backpack. (laughs) Hey everybody, listening on Radio 586.net from the Musicians Union where I have Las Calacas in the studio. Amazing. This band is the most high energy, fantastic band. I just I just had to bring them in. They are local now, but world look out for Las Calacas. Let's hear. Are we ready to hear the first track? Here we go. Thank you. 
Las Calacas. Wow. I have in the studio the band members of Las Calacas. I have Cisco Carbala. What's up? Vic Tellez. Bueno. <laughs> Rafa Calaca. How's it going? And Javier Pimentel. Hey, how we doing? Wow. <laughs> They are, I, I first saw them, it was Sam Gomez who introduced me to them, and I first saw them at Last Exit, and I just never miss a gig. They've got a gig coming up on this coming Saturday, this coming Saturday, with Tropa Magica at Last Exit also. So let's find out a little bit about the band. So I think this music is completely uncategorizable. I'm not even going to try. And, I, and it's sad that record companies and producers look for a category, so I'm going to ask the difficult question. How would you define it? And is there someone that is more the leader, or do you all have a voice? We all have a voice. Have a voice. Yeah, yep. we all talk. I mean, so, would yeah, to define the, the, the music that we play, um, it's more like a, like a cumbia. Um, it's like a fusion between uh, cumbia and, and reggae, rock. I mean, it, it, it's just a mixture of stuff that we learned when we were younger when we were growing up listening to music like you know Vic um, you know uh, Raf and all of us you know we all grew up listening to different music so we just put it all together and, and just came up like a cumbia fusion type of uh, music so I, I know a lot of people are you know call it you know it, it sounds a little bit of rockabilly a little bit of, of, of reggae a little bit of rock a little bit of just different but to us it's just a cumbia fusion you know that's Fusion is a pretty good word, but, but that gets confusing with um, some of the some of the sort of world music that I have a lot of problem with. It's it's just too bland or blasé. It just doesn't really go anywhere. Your music is very dynamic, absolutely danceable, high energy. I mean, I have trouble hashtagging it when I'm playing your songs. I don't even know what to put. My show is normally a rockabilly show, but I I love this music. Now the question is, when you say cumbias. Uh, there's a funny category we have in rockabilly called mixabilly, cumbia billy. It isn't that, and it isn't any one thing. Uh, it's like lifeblood. I just never even have the right word for it. So uh, here's a difficult question for you. Your audience, right now, it feels like your audience, or uh, and maybe you want your audience to be mostly geared towards Latino, Chicano, Mexican, what's the right word? What's the right word? What is the right, you know, I, I have people tell me that it's, it's uh, you can't describe it. To, you can't say Hispanic, Latino. Who is your audience? And is that audience okay with you being for everybody? Sometimes people like to own the culture. Yeah, well, I mean, when it comes down to it, our music is very, uh, I want to say it's just um, universal. Like, you know, so we just cater to, you know, to everybody who's a, who wants to listen, anybody that's inspired by the music. Um, we just, you know, yes, we have probably 80% of the backbone of the music is cumbia, which cumbia is Hispanic, Latino, comes from, from Colombia, of course. And then we just integrate it with rock, with reggae, just anything. I mean, it's just basically, I want to say it's very organic because it's a, it's, I guess it's a sound that we all came up with, uh, us four, you know, so, I mean, but yes, at our shows, you do see more of Chicanos and Latinos, you know, um, but that the target, the target is just to, you know, just to make people dance and to inspire people. Like, you know, like that's, that's the whole point. If you like our music, you like our music. If you don't, well, you don't, you know what I mean? So that's, that's when it comes down to it, it's just universal. But again, at our shows, you do see a lot of Chicanos, a lot of Hispanics. So well, I think that's important because here we're in Arizona broadcasting out of Southwest United States and a large population to me, I feel is completely neglected for what they're able to listen to. The Spanish-speaking radio stations are very pop, very pop-oriented, and they're really, I mean, unless you're listening to really old-school cumbias on some stations at the end of the dial, or even on AM, it's really hard to hear new progressive cumbias that's done the way that you do it. Uh, so let me ask, uh, uh, well, where, you said you got together and created this music, so I need to ask, because when I listen, how long have each one of you been playing your instruments? How about you, Cisco, the bass player? I'll start with you. I've, um, when I first started playing, uh, since I was probably like 10 years old, I, I played guitar. Uh, got introduced to the uh, bass guitar. Uh, Raphael, actually, the drummer, actually introduced me to, to the bass because his dad played bass. And um, I, I didn't even know 
you know, I was 17. I think I was like 16 years old when I got introduced to the bass. And he said, hey, won't you play bass? And I tried it out, and ever since then, since I was 16, um, it's been over, God, it's almost like 15, maybe close to 20 years I've been playing wow, bass. Okay. And it's it's just, you know, it's been a while, you know, like, I look back into how I first started to now, you know, how I progressed and how I've, I've done so much in, in the in the bass industry of, of, you know, playing and meeting these other bass players, their techniques and and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, bass is, is my life, you know, that's what I do, that's what I love and it's what keeps me calm. Great, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, about, I'd say about 20 years I, I've been playing. Makes sense, yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. How about you, Vic Tellez, the guitar player, just blows me away. I asked him to come to a couple of jams a few years ago and he said he didn't know if he would be up to par. <laughs> it just blows me Those away. Rockabilly guys How long have you good. been playing? I've been playing, uh, I think it's about 13 years now. Okay. I started when I was 13. I wanted Cisco's job. I wanted to play bass. Really? Yeah, well I wanted to play drums before that and my friend showed me this bass line and I'm like, cool, yeah. I want to play this. <laughs> this. This feels cool. Uh, I asked parents for a guitar. I don't think they knew the difference between a bass and a guitar. I got a guitar, um, an electric guitar with a cable, no amp, and I had a tape machine. I would, the microphone input, plug the guitar in, and I would, li I would listen to um, Hip Hop is Dead by Nas, the only tape that I had, just over and over, and I would learn to play these songs. I learned how to play Indigata De Vida because of that, that sampled on that record. And I just, I went all all over after that, just wow. discovering different kind of music. And, just play, never stop playing. Just, I always kept playing. How, how did you get Indigata De Vida? That's like your well the, on the on the song uh, on the on the 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 the, the track uh, Hip Hop Is Dead by Nas. It's 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 it's, it's sampled, right. it, and I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that that yeah. was a thing. You know, I was just playing music. I wanted I just wanted to play guitar. That's very explorative to have found that track. I mean, I think that's yeah. really important that that became a source of where you start playing guitar because you play guitar that crosses it crosses from you know metal into slash into cumbias it's really a brilliant yeah. brilliant guitar player really excellent how about you Rafa oh man this well, I, I gotta say this I I've never seen a drummer like this this is two drummers in one oh, thank you. and I, I mean he has not only the kit going on but he has an electric electric drum over here that he's creating completely different sounds and percussion I've never seen a drummer like this and I've seen a lot of drummers over the years. Thank you Hello. very much. I appreciate it. Um, well, I started at the age of nine. <clears throat> I, can I uh, can I move this a bit? There it goes. Okay, sorry about that feedback. Um, <clears throat> I started off at the age of nine. Um, I started off uh, I started off playing uh, Mexican regional music with my dad, because my dad and my uncles they had a band at the time and they were looking for a drummer. And as a little kid, I've always had problems with my hands, like keeping them to myself, like like uh, well. In, in a good way, not in a bad way. <laughs> but I mean, like, 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 you know, just like, 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 on my, on my desk, you know, on the floor, on the wall. I, I would, I would, you know, just jam. And uh, my parents, they would, uh, my teachers would actually call my parents, and they'd be like, "Hey, your kid, he just won't, he won't stop moving. You know, he just wow. ADD or whatever it, it is that you call." Anyway, so my dad goes, "Hey, you look like a drummer. Uh, we're gonna buy you a drum set, uh, the cheapest drum set we can find, and you're gonna join the band." I was like, "Okay." So I started at the age of nine, and I started with the Mexican regional music because that's all. That's the only music that I knew. And then after that, you know, the band broke up, of course, because my uncles and my dad, you know, they had other jobs. So I got left alone, and so that's when I got introduced to rock, uh, to reggae, of course, to funk, to all kinds of different types of music, and everything else is just his, uh, history. So I guess I'm 35 years old, so I started at the age of nine, so I can't do the math. So, so <laughs> I, I don't know. So I guess I've been playing ever since then, you know? Um, wow. Yeah, so yeah. it's been uh, it's just been ongoing and ongoing without stopping and just trying to trying to be better every day at your instrument, you know. Did you have lessons at all? No, I had no lessons. No, no. Lessons. like everything was just a oral perception. It was a, 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 a oral perception or just visual? Um, I tried taking like a, a, some classes at GCC after high school. Yeah, it wasn't for me. It, it wasn't for me because you know you had to read the notes, and I, I have nothing against it, but I, it's just more you know I, it's better just to express something that comes out fr uh, from you, you know, instead of having a sheet of paper telling you what to do, you know, but, uh. but yeah, I started at, at that age, you know, and, and Cisco and myself, so we go way back, we've known each other since, pff, pff, like, 14, 14, 14 years old, right, or yeah. something like that, yeah, we, uh, we know him for each other. It's funny because he, he played bass in, in, uh, 
he actually played bass in the mariachi yeah. class we had. <laughs> he played bass and I played guitar, and that's how kind of me and Raf uh, got introduced. And, and you know, he I kicked him out of the band before he wasn't even. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he asked me to play drums. You know, I can I play oh, drums really? with you? And I told him, Nah, you're cool, but nah, you know, you play you play the you know toro lochi. You know, <laughs> you know uh, before I get to Javier, there's a there's a lesson in this to parents or anybody with kiddos listening. You know, today, a, a nervous kid with hands, like, drumming on tapping, they would put that kid on medication. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Rafa's dad said, no, you're going to play drums. We need a drummer. That's just right there, you know. Mm -hmm. take, take, take note of that. Javier, how did you start with percussion and being the front man? It's a, you got to own the room, and you just get up there, and you got everybody. And, and I like how you relate to... The women and the whole crowd. I mean, you got you have a fan base of people that were just turista coming into the uh, last exit, or well, I mean, in the valley bar, like tourists just coming in, and like they're all of a sudden they're just they're cramming into the door, trying to see what it is and who that is. How long have you been doing singing and fronting? Honestly, um, compared to these guys, uh, I'm a newborn. <laughs> I'm a baby. <laughs> um, I've known Raph and Cisco, I, I want to say over 10 years, um, but I used to do photography for them. Uh, so there's a there's a whole backstory to to that. Uh, me and Cisco at one point were even roommates, uh, but uh, a couple years ago, uh, we uh, Raph actually, me and Raph met up, and uh, just to catch up, you know, again we're we're longtime friends, and uh, Raph told me about this project that him and Cisco had going. And same thing with Cisco, uh, I haven't seen him for years, so uh, he invited me over for for their practice, kind of check out what they got going and, and the project they got going. And honestly, I just went over to go catch up with them and maybe have a beer, <laughs> you know, but um, they, uh, they started practicing and right off the back, I just loved the sound they had going, the cumbia, because for me, uh, growing up Latino and, and Hispanic, um, cumbia was a huge influence for me. Um, it was Saturday morning, mom was cleaning up. If we had cumbias playing in the background, we knew it was time to clean up, you know, that, that's what I would wake up to. So uh, uh, my family being from Mexico City, uh, Mexico de oh, Efe, wow, okay. it's, a huge, uh, it's a huge thing for our culture and our gatherings, uh, birthdays, quinceañeras, all those things. Yeah. My mom taught me how to dance at an early age and it's always been something that I, I've loved. You know, so see, hearing this sound and, and hearing this new cumbia coming uh, with these guys, that just, uh, it, I fell in love with it right away. And so uh, when I was at practice with them, again, just hanging out, uh, they happened to have a weedle, uh, you know, the scratching <laughs> instrument, right? And uh, they're like, hey, can you keep a beat? I'm like, I, I, think, I, I think I can. And um, honestly, I just started just practicing, and uh, they invited me to come next week. I kept coming to practice, and finally, uh, you know, they asked me, I was like, hey, uh, would you like to, you know, at least help us out and, and practice with us? I was like, cool. And uh, just like Raf said, it's, it's just been a, a real organic uh, journey. You know, um, the influence, like I said, uh, from each and every one of us, um, going back to your question, you know, our, our crowd and our, our the people we play to, it's just like a melting pot, you know, uh, cross cultures, all the influences that we've had in our past and our history, you know, we bring it back together. And, and it's nice to see also the new generation of Latinos, you know, uh, moving to this music that we all grew up to. And now it's a new generation. It's a, a new influence. So it's something that, that we want to definitely want to do is uh, make sure I have people have fun, you know, uh, it's not angry music, it's just happy music and gets the soul moving. <laughs> All right, let's hear some, let's hear another track and we might have to lose two of the band members, but we're gonna listen to one more track in the meantime. Take it away.
Kalakas, and we are here in the studio. You are listening to Radio 586.net. If you haven't tuned in and you're looking at Facebook Live, you can also listen on Radio 586.net. It's the station from the Musicians Union. And we are here also in studio with Tom Coulson producing the show and the band members of Las Calacas. So uh, you're going to have a video coming out. You're going to be shooting a video on March 16th. Who wants to tell us about that? Well, <clears throat> well. so we are going to be shooting a, a music video March uh, 16th. Um, we really can't say too much about it where it's going to be at because we're gonna, it's going to be kind of like a private thing, and we're going to invite certain fans. It's going to be more like a, like a private thing, you know? Um, we're going to get about 20 or 30 people, like of our, of our biggest fans, to come out and shoot a video with us. But uh, just to give you a heads up, there's going to be just a bunch of dancing. The band members will be there. Of course, we have to be there because it's a video <laughs> shoot. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. And it's going to be it's so we're going to shoot it down here in uh, in, in Phoenix, in a private spot. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then once we do that, then we'll let you guys know. Of course, everybody's going to know when uh, the the video is is going to be released or whatnot. But it's going to be an awesome. It's a big production video. That's all what what I got to say. Um, we're going to be working with uh, two of my uh, of of one of my idols uh, when it comes to um, shooting videos and videography. A guy called a Junior, and another guy called Obed, and Frank too. And Frank too. Uh, they're they're an awesome team. Work with those guys, and those guys are if you want if you want everything perfectly done, that's who you go with. And those guys are they're just on a whole different level, you know. Wow. So. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. Wow! Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds great. This is no no small no poquito no small peanuts here. This is gonna be a really great great video. I have I have no doubt. This is a band man. This band just blows me out. again. I also uh, remember on Saturday Saturday night at last exit is what time are you going? Is uh, last clock is going on? What time? Um, we want to say uh, it's like roughly around like nine like nine thirty. Okay. Yeah, nine or or, or nine thirty. Uh, doors open at uh, seven thirty. First band's at eight, and then it's us and Tropa Magica. So. Tropa Magica. Yeah. And it fills up, folks. So please get there, be there. It's gonna uh, be sold out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's gonna, gonna be sold, sold out. out so you gotta mm -hmm. know, you gotta check check it out. Also, uh, so the name Las Calacas. I do have to ask about that because I know I, I've had asked a couple of people, <laughs> what does it mean to you, or what does it mean, and it doesn't really come up as anything. It comes up in the urban slang dictionary as bones, which it isn't, and then mm -hmm. it comes up, uh, it comes up as um, I had to write it down, rattle, <laughs> no clatter, clatter. And uh, so what is it, what is it, like what is the name Las Calacas? Well, okay, when it comes down to it, a calaca, what it is, it, it comes from the, uh, from the Aztecs. Basically what it means, it means a re reincarnation. It's like, you know, if you, through this lifetime you live, for example, us as, as musicians, we love to play music. Once we're gone from this earth, it's basically reincarnation as in like playing a, an instrument and but in a skeleton form and being happy it's more of a positive instead of, of a negative if you're a cook and if you if that's your passion when you pass away on the next world you're going to be a skeleton of a, a calaca that that's that that, that you're going to be cooking an artist as yourself you know it's good because you're an, an, a, an amazing painter you know nice. so um yeah so basically that that's what it is it's just basically it's just you're not you're not yet yet and you're going to be doing that for the rest of your life for for a, um, eternity so it, it's it's more it's more like of a positive of a positive thing because a lot of people in Mexico if you tell them about a calaca the first thing that they think is a, is a skeleton and it's bad it's like no 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 it's like oh. no but I mean you just kind of have to do like your research and um, and that's basically that's what it is I mean we're we're meant to do this you know like this is this, yeah. this we're meant to do this we're not we're not meant to do anything else this is what we're born to do and once we pass away we're gonna keep on doing it nonstop. Yeah, so that's that's uh when you say we're meant to do this, that is kind of pending into one of my questions is, it's like I would say where do you see the band a year from now, but it isn't even like a year from now. Okay. It's where do you want to go, and uh, oh well, I'll hold on to that for a second. But where do you want to go, and uh, you know when you when you're going to be a professional band, and that is going to be your life. Your fam has to be okay with that, you know. All you the wives, girlfriends, kiddos, they got to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. So is everybody, everybody's on board, and where do you want to go? <laughs> I think where we want to go really is, is uh, spread, spread our music all over the world, you know? Well, I mean, we want to we wanna really just go out and, and spread the music everywhere. A year from now, we want to tour the world, you know? We really, 
this year we're focusing on um, here in town, our, our hometown, Arizona. We want them to, to hear us more and, 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 and love our music. You know, we're, we want to conquer here for everybody to love us. And I know it's, it's hard for everybody, but at least as many people we can. And then go out and spread the word and, and tell people, look, it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's kind of like Las Calacas seems like, oh, it's, 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 a, it's sad, you know, but, but we, we reverse it to some happy. You know, wow. so it's it's so when we go out there and play music for for other people, it, I want them to understand like, hey, this is it, it might not have a lot of lyrics, but listen to the music. That's what that's where it's at. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, but I think a year from now, I, I think we we should be out touring a lot more. You know, uh, this year I think we'll do a little bit, but um, I think in in town we'll, we'll we'll be spreading a lot more of our music. That's good. All right. Are we good with that? Oh, yeah. hey, want to add to that? Thing. Well, I don't know. I have to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> because because uh, yeah. the thing, it's like I think I might. If we're gonna go on tour, I might have to buy socks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that that's just a dumb uh, joke that we have yeah, in, in, in the band. I, like, I, like, you know what I mean? Buying socks. I'll tell you. The, I'll tell you the story. It's short. Go. Um, I, I used to call them all the time and, and and ask them, hey, when are we gonna practice? And this was when we were like 16 years old. And I'd be like, hey, Raphael, you can practice today. And he'd be like. No man, I can't practice today. I gotta go buy socks. <laughs> <laughs> and that that that's the way to, for me to for him to hang up and okay, I'll see you tomorrow. And I'll call him the next day. And the same thing. I gotta go buy socks. <laughs> man, backpack. Gonna... You, you should have seen my sock collection. It was awesome. It was awesome. I was just gonna say. I couldn't wait. To, I mean, next time you go on stage, you're gonna have people throwing socks oh, at you. You know what's gonna I'm happen. All, right? I'm all for it. You know. <laughs> just make sure it's they're clean. Yeah. <laughs> Don't rub them on your feet. Sock connoisseur. Right, right. <laughs> So uh, I have a, let's see, another question I really needed to ask. On your bass and on your drums is build your dreams. Uh -huh. Do you want to talk about that and yeah, okay. why you, um, where, so, how you arrived? Yeah, at? definitely. So when it comes down to it, uh, my good friend, his name is Ray. Ray Cruz, he's the owner of, uh, of, uh, of that brand called Working Class Cultura. Yes. So him and I, we've gone way back, and you know, um, he's a he's a hard worker. Like I, I admire that guy. I admire him and his and his uh, and his nephew Frankie as well too, because it's two guys that, that started it. Um, the thing is with Ray, he's like the most positive person I've ever met, like in my life. You know, so he's like, hey man, like you know, um, build your dreams. I like what you're doing. Build your dreams, because that's that's his slogan is build your dreams, right? So when it comes down to it, you know, he's uh, he's always been a big help to us. Uh, Ray has has helped helped us out immensely, like in a bunch of things, you know. So we're like, hey man, he's like, hey, so what if I uh, so what if I throw this so my so my name on this, this and that? We're like, yeah, for sure, because basically when it comes down to it, it's a team. Like everybody has to help out each other. It's not a competition. Like musicians should uh, help out other musicians, mm -hmm. artists. It's like it's a community instead of us like fighting and thinking who's better. Everybody should just get together. And the thing is that Ray, he's helped us out a lot, and we've helped out Ray as well too. And we're, it's just basically, it's just fusion. Like everybody, just let's do it. Let's we're we're on the same page. We're trying to we're trying to make it somewhere, and and let's do it. You know, so that's when it comes out to it. So I, I know his line. I see him all yeah, over. I see exactly. him at the car shows. You see him everywhere. Yeah, he has a a a, a, a grooming product, right? Grooming. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so a shiner gold. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ray Ray is, is everywhere, but he's doing it. Because he, he wants to, uh, out of a great heart. Like he's not doing it just to be like, oh, okay, well, no. He's he's a very awesome-hearted person. That he's just like he's like, hey, man, let's let's yeah. help each other out. Cool, let's do it. You know. So yeah. So when it comes down to Ray, Ray and and Frankie from from the working class, they uh, you know, he he's a guy who actually sponsored my drum set oh. um, about a year ago. So I, I I was with a company called Love Custom Drums, uh, sponsored by them, and uh, and Ray, they both combined with each other and. And that's uh, that's where they made that drum set, and with Cisco as well too, you know. So, oh, so wow. and the next is a guitar, and, and the next is a Guido. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so Ray, if you're hearing, dude, <laughs> just kidding. Wow. So you gotta yeah. buy me another <laughs> Supra. <though. laughs> yeah, I hope he's listening. So, no. uh, we're gonna do listen to another track. Are we? And um, do you guys? Are you guys gonna be sticking? Yeah, around? I I have to take off, but um, thank you for everything for having us here. Um, and all the fans and people listening out there, I just want to say what's up and go to our show, Last Exit Live, Saturday. Um, be there early because the show might, sh it should be sold out. So Yeah, it will. 
So thank you. Thank you, Cisco Cabal, bass player. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll see you again. See you Saturday. Thank you. All right. Vic, are you good to stay? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna take okay. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, thank you guys can move over. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Guys can move on over, and we're gonna listen to the next track. I hope you are listening on Facebook Live or Radio586.net. Las Calacas is going to be at Last Exit this coming Saturday. That was my favorite track called Enigma. And I've played that track on my Walkabilly show, but we're here on the Musicians Union Station. Again, Radio586.net. And I'm in the studio here. Tom Colson is producing. And I've got Rafa Calaca here. And Javier Pimentel. Rafa is... The drummer, rhythm, percussionist, 
I don't extraordinary. I don't even know what to call what happens back there. Thank, thank you. I appreciate the heartbeat. <laughs> and and Javier is the front man and percussionist. Uh, and tell me about the name of the instrument that you play. A lot of people ask me, was he playing? <laughs> it's a it's a wido, so it's a it's basically a musical cheese grater. <laughs> That's what people think. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a scratching instrument. It just uh, ke- uh, it's just a traditional cumbia instrument. It just keeps a, a a beat, a rhythm. It's just that you hear the, you start hearing that and you know it's a it's a cumbia. <laughs> yeah. And so you mentioned that you learned dancing when you were a kid. That you were dancing was just something that happened around your house, even when your mom was cleaning. <laughs> I can see it. So, um, does da- doesn't dancing influence what your music is about? I mean, you decided to create dance music. Um, it, it really does. I mean, that's. I mean, I think that's why uh, the show. It just. It's. I don't know. The music itself. It just kind of takes over. You know. It's a yeah. no. I don't. I don't care if you've never heard of cumbia, but it, something. It's got, something's going to happen to your body. You know. You're going to start moving involuntarily. It starts with a foot tap. And then all of a sudden you you get a full blown dance and and that's what it does for me and and that's what I try to do at a show is just transmit that you know transmit that the energy that these guys are putting together this this music and I just try to do my best to you know to be up there and and just transmit that energy and to the crowd and make sure they have a good time you know you do you do that well because you you can a lot of your music is instrumental at least right now it's instrumentals. But ha- having a front man for an instrumental is a new concept. Really, you don't you don't see that. I mean, you're talking to people, you're interacting with people, and and you are playing the instrument. But it's a really different way of approaching. Just you know, I don't know how many surf bands I've seen where I'm tired of looking at the you know they make the same moves all the time. But this is very very unique. It's just so alive. And uh, you're going to be picked up by Spotify soon, so people will be able to listen. Want to talk about that? Yeah, um, basically right now, uh, so we're just working, you know, it takes a while to get all the processing in, but yeah, it's basically, uh, we're going to be on Spotify, on iTunes, uh, Pandora, and over 150 apps. So what did you say earlier? It was what? Cross what? Uh, We're just uh, uh, just cross-platform. Yeah, yeah. so so we're we're basically going to be all around. Our our YouTube channel is going to be up as well, too. Once the video is recorded, then... You know, yeah, I mean, this it's just the beginning, you know, so, yeah, it just, everything just takes a while, you know, people can just have patience with this, but it's gonna, it's gonna get there, and you'll be able to get our music from basically anywhere. There's, there's a festival that happens every year in Sweden that I never knew about, and somebody told me, I I can't remember the name, it's like some kind of Wunderbar festival or something, and there's, it's it's like a Woodstock every year. It's that size. People people run around with Woodstock. I, I was actually too young also, but I certainly knew about it. I don't, Tom Hacksaw, how many people were at Woodstock? Do you know? I want to say over a million. It was a, it was out there. It was on a big farm. Well, this happens every year in Sweden, and Las Calacas is going to be there because this is. The, I I just I'm just saying I know that they will. It's world sourced bands. It's not just Swedish bands. I mean, Dead Mouse was there, and uh, Danny Teneglia. Uh, a, a lot of the um, house music people were there over the years, but but band, bands, uh, I think like Foo Fighters was probably there, you know, just it's huge, huge, and I just see there's no stopping this band. I really love Las Galacas. Thank we're going to have uh, one more track. Is there anything anybody else you guys want to add to this? No, we'll just basically, we just want to say thank you so much for actually uh, giving us uh, the, the opportunity, you know, of coming in and, and you know, and just letting us talk about, you know, the whole movement and everything that, that we're actually uh, going through, everything that we've, that we've done, that we worked hard for. And it's people like you that, be- that believe in us, that actually that to us, it, it, it means a lot, you know, because that's, that's a big thing that, so we have a thing that we say, it's like inspire, create and innovate. Like that's, that's something that, that we, that we want to do for people. And as long as, you know, it just it just feels good to hear that because, you know, it gives us energy. It gives us the energy for us to to push forward and to start making more music and nonstop, you know. It's just it's an it's a beautiful feeling when you're on stage and you see people dancing and you see just people having a great time, you know, because that's that's what music's supposed to do. You know, it's yeah. supposed to again inspire, create and innovate and and I think we're good. But other than that, you know, just thank you so much for, you know, for the support, for the never ending support. Oh, totally. Uh, you know, I, I'm a major dance fan. I do I hip hop dance, I swing dance, I do Charleston. And one thing that was missing was 
Latin dance. I started doing it this year because of this, because, of, because listening to Las Calacas. I did a one or two classes last year, and I didn't think my body could do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a New Yorker, so I'm New York Puerto Rican. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> but, but we have it's just, it's just a different, it's just a different way of moving because it's not, it's not really Mexican-based cumbias, and I really loved this. And I found that the more I listened to it, after a couple of classes, it's David Olarte. I would highly recommend unsolicited plug at Latin Night at the Deuce. Unsolicited, he is a great teacher. I learned it, and I practice it in the racquetball court every day by myself. I practice it because it's just fantastic rhythm, and I practice to their music, to Las Calacas music every day. I also listen to Gypsy Kings. You know, for people that really like Latin-flavored world music, you just can't go wrong with this. No. Javier, you want anything, say anything else? Uh, honestly, just thank everyone for the, the support and the love. And uh, honestly, it's, it's just, uh, it's been an amazing experience. Like I said, it's, it's my personal first project that, I, that I've been taking uh, part of. And just uh, the reactions that we've been getting and, and just the, the comments and, and like I said, the, the support. And we start seeing, you know, more fans and they keep showing up and they, and they look forward to these shows. And, and that makes us look forward to it because, you know, we show up for them and we show up for, for to see their faces, you know, light up. And, and we're all jumping up and down. Like, yeah, you just feel that energy and that vibe. And, and we just can't get enough of that. So, again, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Backpack. I mean, thank you for all the love and support, all the kind words. Like, honestly, you know, Jeez. it's, it's again, I've, I've never experienced this. So, honestly, it's, it's something that, you know, I'm going to take with me to, again, to the grave. And, you know, yeah. thank you again. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you. And we're going to go out with... What's it called? Oh, uh, Bumba Dub, Bumba Dub. Uh, so listen, don't forget this Saturday night, this Saturday night at Last Exit, Las Calacas and Trouble Magica. Uh, vamos a bailar. Let's do it. Vamos a bailar. Vamos a bailar. Yes, for sure. Macizos. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Radio, 586 AZ Roots. Music mix from the desert southwest. Making Arizona musicians and music tastes of our region more accessible to world media. Made possible by a grant from youngsounds.org. This radio series is part of a community outreach for Arizona musicians as well as members of Local 586. Other Young Sounds outreach includes music clinics for young musicians, a summer jazz camp, and scholarships for advanced education. Young Sounds of Arizona on Facebook.